Hi, welcome to another exciting tutorial of Stream Developers. This video focuses on building a live audio room app for Android, similar to Twitter Spaces or Clubhouse. We will use the Compose SDK of Stream Video, allowing developers to build audio rooms, audio and video calling, and live streaming apps for React, iOS, Flutter, React Native, Android, JavaScript, and Unity. Our final Compose project will look like this. You can start a live audio room conversation from the Android app. Then we use the companion web app to join the voice conversation. Once participants join a room conversation, they can get access to built-in features like requesting to speak. They can leave the room quietly without others being notified. Some of the main features of the app includes RTMP broadcasting. This allows you to broadcast a low latency audio rooms from Stream's global edge network to make the audio room app secure, reliable, and scalable. The audio room app comes with backstage by default. The backstage feature of the app allows a host and a co-host to have conversations before the audio room goes live. If you are new to Stream Video, go to the developer page on our website and click video and audio and check the available video SDKs such as React, iOS, Android, React Native, Flutter, JavaScript, and Unity. From the Streams homepage, you can sign up for a free account. The source code of this project can be found in this GitHub repository under the folder Android Compose. You can find it in the Android Audio Room folder. Let's begin by creating a new Compose project and install the Android Video SDK of Stream. We will create and join a room. Then we will define the layout and description of the room and wrap up. So let's launch Android Studio and create a new Compose project. From the left sidebar under Templates, let's select Phone and Tablet. Then we choose Empty Activity and Next. We will call this application Audio Room and save it. We now have an empty Compose project in Android Studio. Let's look at how to install the Android Video SDK of Stream. We can add the Video SDK as a dependency in the apps build.gradle file. To do this, we expand the Gradle scripts folder. You can see here there are two Gradle files, one for the project and one for the app. We need to install the SDK in the apps Gradle file. So let's click that and scroll to dependencies. I have the code in my clipboard, so I will paste it here. So the first implementation consists of the core video SDK of stream video, as well as compose UI components. So once we add this implementation, we get access to all the compose UI components of the Android SDK. The other implementations here are optional. If you use the latest version of Android Studio, we are using Android Studio Giraffe, which is recommended. I added them in case Android Studio doesn't add them by default. After we add the SDK, we need to sync the app's Gradle file. We can do this by going to the top right and click Sync Now. We have now installed the Android SDK in our project. Let's look at how to create and join a room. We will do this implementation in the main activity Kotlin file to make the tutorial short and straightforward. However, if you are building a production app, you should do the implementation in your application class or dependency injection model. So let's open our main activity Kotlin file. Here, I'm going to remove these two compose hours because we do not need them. Below the onCreate method, let's add these properties. To get access to the video SDK, we need a user. So here we define the following properties of the user. We have user token, user ID, and call ID. Next, we will create a user with an ID and name. After we create the user, we can initialize the stream video client using an API key and token. When you create a stream account, you can get the API key from your dashboard. You can use your API key and the streams token generator service to generate a user token for testing purposes. But for a production app, that should be done on your server side. After we create a user and initialize the video client, we can now create 
and join a room. So in this code snippet, we create and join a room with the type audio room and a specified call ID. We add the host as a member and give the role host. Then we define the title and the description of the room. Let's create another composable. Below set content, I will add this composable. So here we use the vertical alignment and horizontal alignment to place the text at the center of the screen. The last thing we need to do is to update set content to display the text. To do that, let's replace the audio room theme with the SDK's video theme. So on the point of establishing the audio room connection, we display the text loading. And when the connection is successful, we use the centered text composable we defined here to display the text ready to render your audio room at the center of the screen. The last thing to do is to add all the necessary imports. After adding all the imports, we need to also fill all these placeholders. For testing purposes, you can get the user credentials from the audio room tutorial on our website. So when you check the audio room tutorial, the user credentials will be similar to this image. So I will select each one of them and replace it. From the toolbar, you can see my Motorola phone is selected. So I will click this button to run the app. So you can see over here, the connection was successful and the app is now running on my Motorola E32. So at the center of the screen, we now have the text ready to render your audio room. So this is how to create and join a room. Next, let's look at how to define the room's layout and description. Let's use our set content to define the room's layout and description. So let's replace the previous one with this sample code. Since the audio room app requires the use of the user's microphone, we need to ask permission for that. So here we use the launch microphone permissions method to request permission for the audio room controls. Next, we are using the call state to observe the connection state and the active speakers. To learn more about the call and participant states, you can check our documentation. Next, we will add four different composables. The first one is the audio room composable. It will display information about the room, participants, and call controls. So below the centered text composable, I will add the audio room composable. This displays information about the room participants as well as the active speakers and call controls. Next, we need another composable for the room description. So that contains the following properties, the title, description, and the number of participants in the audio room. For the room participants, we will add this composable. In summary, it displays a vertical grid of participant avatars based on a sorted list. We also need to add another composable for the participant avatar. So the participant avatar composable displays information about the participants, name or ID, and the participant's image. It displays whether the participant is speaking or not, and whether the participant's audio is enabled or disabled. Our last composable is for the room controls. So here we create UI controls for managing the audio room, including a toggle for microphone, and also a button to start the audio room and another button to stop it. So this is all we need to do to define the room's layout and description. So I will go ahead and add all the necessary imports. From the toolbar, you can see my Motorola phone is still selected. So let's click the run button. You can see over here, the connection was successful and the app is now running on my Motorola phone. So we have the room title, description, and the number of participants and two buttons a button to enable and disable audio. And once we start speaking, you can see it tells about who is speaking at the moment. So let's click the go live button. You can see our room has only one participant. To let multiple people join the room, we are going to use the companion audio room web app. So you can see here, it is displaying the room is live. On the bottom right, we can add a new room. Since we have one already live, I will cancel the operation. On the top left, we have the participant's avatar and name. 
By clicking this menu, we have access to all live audio rooms, upcoming ones, as well as just ended audio rooms. Let's click the join button to join the audio room. So from the Android app, you can now see we have two participants and over here, it also displays two listeners. Let's join multiple participants. From the Android app, we now have five participants. In the companion web app, you can now see we have five listeners over here. So once you decide not to listen to the audio conversation again, you can leave quietly. So now from the Android app, you can see we have four participants instead of five because one listener has just left. Let's join her again. And now it displays five listeners. That is our total journey in creating the Android Live Audio Chatroom app using Compose and the Android SDK of Stream Video. We just scratched the surface of what you can do with the Android SDK. I encourage you to head to our documentation to learn more about the advanced features such as requesting to speak, leaving the room quietly, as well as defining community roles. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Feel free to reach out for any question or suggestion. Thanks for watching this video.